Good morning. We're sitting here uh, just past 9 a.m., so top of the hour, and I'm going to start going over our watch list for those uh, tuning in on YouTube and Facebook. Welcome for uh, the morning show here. We've got some momentum this morning, which is great to see. CWBR is up currently 186%, so that's a good move. That's um, what we like to see. I'll put that one up on the, uh, the main screen so you can see that one clearly. And let's see, um, I'm gonna log in here to my stream so I can just watch this a little bit better. So CWBR uh, just broke 200% on the day. All right, so uh, those of you guys tuning in on YouTube and on Facebook, let me know if you can hear me and see me all right. Seems like the broadcast is going through as the connection is good. All right, so uh, this morning we've got a couple different stocks uh, worth keeping an eye on. You've got CWBR, right now you've got BioC moving a little bit higher. BioC is a tricky one. It's a it's a pretty thinly traded stock. Just went from $7 up to 770 on the ask. CWBR the high right now is 66 but you've got you've got three green candles in a row so it's a little extended coming into this level so a little extended coming into this level here bioc is also a bit extended you can see bioc kind of popped up there through seven up to 770 and then coming back down so high level uh for those tuning in uh for the first time i want to remind you uh just to sort of set level expectations here what's the goal so the goal each day for me as a day trader is to try to find really one or two good trades now some days as you guys know i'll take a lot more trades than that uh, but really if we just simplify it down the goal is to find one trade and to grab 20 cents out of the market if you can grab 20 cents out of the market with a thousand shares that's 200 bucks so when we look at a stock like BioC that just went from 7 to 770, that certainly could have offered the 20 cent potential. We look at CWBR, which is up currently 190%. This one certainly offered the 20 cent potential. In fact, I've already gotten my 20 cents on this trade, on this stock. So I've already hit $1,331 of profit on the day on CWBR. So if I was a trader focusing on discipline at this point, I would already walk away. I would say I'm done. I got green, I'm out of here, I'll come back and do it again tomorrow. It's so important to be disciplined about locking up green days and then coming back and doing it again tomorrow. So I love when I see traders who are saying, okay, hit my daily goal, I'm out of here, because that's showing me they've got really good discipline. So the question uh, ultimately is, how do you find a stock that can give you the potential for that 15, 20 cent, 30 cent, 40 cent, 50 cent move? And uh, then once you find the stock, where do you get in and where do you get out? So if we look at CWBR, this stock is at the top of my scan right here. So it's the leading percentage gainer in the entire market right now. That's a big deal. There's a lot of eyes that are on this stock. That's what we like to see. Now, right now, it's extended. Okay, but we found the right stock. It's up a lot. It has high relative volume. It's got a relatively low float. It's liquid. Everything about it right now is good, except for the current chart pattern is showing that it's a little extended because we already have three green candles in a row. Naturally, a better place to have bought it would have been like down here or maybe like right in here. You know, and, and you know, you could have taken some trades in the middle of this on the way up. But at this point, if you bought it right up here, well, you're kind of getting in at the top. At least it feels that way right now. So you're getting in a little high. So this needs to pull back. 
before I think it's safe for another entry. But then that's the question is, okay, well, where exactly, how do I find my entry? So now I'm gonna start analyzing the chart, that's technical analysis, and looking for a potential entry on this. So I could connect uh, the lows of these candles here, uh, potentially draw out what could be an ascending support line. So if it came down to this blue line, that could be a place to take a dip, potentially. Uh, on the five minute chart, we've seen the pullbacks have been near the nine moving average. So the nine moving average could be another, um, a potential spot for an entry. The high of day is $4.65. Now, right now it's hanging out at five, uh, sorry, 454. So it's really just under that high of day. It wouldn't surprise me right in this area if there are people shorting with a stop against the high thinking, well, geez, it's only, you know, I'm getting in like 10 cents off the high. This is a good spot to short. So you might see a wall of selling up here against the high. That would be resistance. And we could see more selling in this like 70s and 75 because even if it breaks the high by like three or four cents, if it breaks but then rejects, well, then that's an even bigger confirmation for a short. So just because it breaks 65 you might have some shorts that cover, but you'll have others that keep adding. So this position right here for me is not, uh, there's not enough reward to justify the risk to buy it to the long side. And I trade in a retirement account, which means all of my gains are tax free, which is phenomenal, but it restricts me to trading only to the long side. I cannot trade to the short side. So, you know, I might see something like this, but uh, I, I'm not gonna trade to the short side. Okay, so right now, CWBR, interesting, but needs to pull back. So if you look at some of our other scans here, OCEA hit the scan. Uh, we've got some continuation stocks we can look at, top gainers, top relative volume, a couple of recent IPO movers. Uh, so I can look at a couple of those in more detail. Those of you tuning in on YouTube, uh, and, and certainly those of you tuning in, uh, tuning in on Facebook as well, I'll put a link uh, for you to register and download a copy of my best-selling book. Let's see, I think I have the page right up here. Yep, I do. So uh, many of you guys know we are currently celebrating our anniversary here at Warrior Trading. It's been uh, 10 years since I started putting out content on YouTube. 10 years. I created the YouTube channel in 2013 and I can't believe how fast the time has gone. It's crazy. And, and every single day, I am still excited to sit down and trade, which really speaks to um, you know how, how fun trading can be. Now, it doesn't mean trading is always fun. There are certainly times where trading uh, can be difficult. There's no question about that. But uh, you know, in totality, it's, it's great. And I love it. And I'm excited to show up every day. And you guys uh, bringing your motivation to the table it's it's awesome to see how excited you guys are to learn. So anyways, um, we've got some free downloads that you guys can um, can access if you'd like. Uh, we've got my micro pullback strategy, my pre-trading checklist, my small account worksheet, a copy of my 2015 best-selling book, How to Day Trade, and my technical analysis series. And everyone that's on our newsletter, our email newsletter, you guys will get a priority access uh, email only invite. We have some specials that we do, but we don't put them on our website. They're just through email. So we like to prioritize um, members that are on the email list. So make sure you guys uh, download these free gifts and uh, get on our email list and we'll send you some emails uh, later this week coming into Memorial Day weekend with some specials that we've got going on. All right, so uh, it's about 10 past nine right now. CWBR, you know, it's kind of going sideways here. The MACD is curling against the trade. So, you know, this is a position where I just think there's more downside than there is upside. So I'm not a buyer in this area. OCEA hit the scanner a few minutes ago. Uh, I don't know about this one. It's under the 200 moving average on the daily. A little bit of resistance here. I don't think that's gonna work for me right now. Bio C, this one hit the scans as well. Hey Max, good morning. Yeah, that's a good call on looking for a bear trap. I'll keep that one on another chart. All right, so I'll put that up there. 
Okay, that looks good. Let's see. Uh, we had MGRM, IPO, big range in two weeks, um, has sold off pretty hard. There is a part of me that wonders when we might get a dead cat bounce on it, because that's a pretty hard sell off. So, you know, it's on my list uh, as a possible trade. MGRM down 13% this morning, but if it bounces, you could easily get I mean, you can get a nice bounce off of that. So anyways, no trade on it yet, but worth watching. It's on the watch list. CWD, another one that did an IPO and has sold off. This one I don't like as much uh, for a bounce. It's already tried to bounce a couple times. CWBR uh, pulling back a little bit here, back down towards uh, 442. So five minutes just starting to pull back. That's fine. You can see how the last time we had Couple candles of pullback, couple candles of pullback. But what we also know is that first pullback and second pullback are usually the best. Third pullback can get a little sloppy. So I have to be a little bit careful about that. OMH. Yep, I can look at that one. Let's see. Uh, right the thing is omh popped up yesterday so since it did pop up yesterday it's not going to be worth uh, trying to trade a dead cat bounce on that today shph lower priced under two dollars mbot yesterday was also lower priced but it did end up making a huge move a really nice move all the way up to over four dollars a share to 437 high so we got a nice move on mbot some uh kind of a dramatic candle there with the halt down but was really steady even into the afternoon so that was good to see So I've got S&P on one chart. Overall market's pulling back a little bit, but generally speaking, we're still in a pretty good position. A little extended um, relative to the last two weeks, sort of at the top of this range. So due for a little bit of a pullback, but hopefully we're able to hold uh, at least the 200 moving average. This dip back here was uh, during the... Um, Silicon Valley banking uh, drama that was going on. So CWBR on that chart. Those of you guys just tuning in, you could check out uh, the link that's pinned in the comments, download some of these free resources. Let me know if you see something that I'm missing. Right, uh, so HTCR, another lower price name, had a move earlier, has kind of lost attention as CWBR squeezed up. Uh, but this is a position, and this is one of the challenges. So like right now, this is a nice area around support. But have traders lost interest in this? That is a challenge right now where we're seeing, you know, a stock that's making a big move and then you start watching it for a pullback and it starts to pull back and then every trader just goes focusing on something else. And then that stock ends up making a big move and the pullback doesn't end up resolving on this one. So it, it right now feels like a bit of jumping from stock to stock to stock to stock. And that is a challenge. Hey, Rob, good morning. Welcome. All right, so Rob says, good morning all. Happy to say Warrior Trading member as of this morning, finally. Welcome. 
Well, uh, I'll remind you the same as I'll remind everyone who's tuning in on Facebook and on YouTube. Number one, practice in a simulator before you put real money on the line. So we have a simulator that we make available for our Warrior Pro members. Use it, practice in it. Don't put real money on the line until you first proven profitability in the simulator. If you do that, that alone is gonna save you a ton of unnecessary losses. The market's gonna be here for you. So be patient, practice in the simulator, get a feel for how these stocks trade, the spreads, how they pop, how they drop, false breakouts, bull traps, bear traps, get a feel for it, get comfortable, go through the classes. And then, you know, once you've started to gain some consistency in the simulator, take a period of time in the simulator where you treat it like real money. You say, all right, I'm gonna treat this like it's a real account and I'm gonna see how I can do over 10 days. If you make money over those 10 days, focusing on one trade a day, then maybe you start thinking about, okay, when's the time to start doing this with real money, but with like 100 shares, proof of concept. That's the right way to learn. And that's not how most traders learn. Most traders throw real money at the market, end up taking real losses, and then get very emotionally and financially invested. They get emotionally compromised in their ability to make good decisions, and it can start uh, your career in a, a very shaky way. So it's not worth doing it that way, especially right now. I mean, the market generally is on the colder side right now. We've had some good opportunities, but it's not the hot market that we had um, you know, in previous months. So this is a good time to be practicing in the simulator. So I don't trade Bitcoin. I have no interest in cryptocurrencies and I've said that for basically forever. Um, I, I don't trust them. I think they're kind of sketchy. And for me, when I first learned about bitcoin i was learning about it because i you know was reading about the silk road and these underground uh you know dark web websites where people were buying and selling drugs and all kinds of illegal things so i've always associated crypto with these unsavory things it's that's just what i know it from and unfortunately the crypto exchanges i always felt were kind of sketchy. I didn't trust them. And then what happened with FTX was just like, yep, that's not surprising. So I've never, I don't trade crypto for the person asking on YouTube, not interested in Bitcoin. Um, I just trade stock. And you know, did I, could I have made money trading cryptocurrency? Sure, maybe, I don't know. Um, but I couldn't tolerate the risk. And the risk for me was that I didn't trust my money in any of those types of uh, accounts, any of those, with any of those brokers. So if you can't trust the your bank, then you know that's that's a major problem. OCEA moving up a little bit, uh, high seven fifty eight. Well, it shows thirty three point eight five. Let's see. Yep, it's accurate. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So I don't short stocks uh, primarily because I can't. I tr I'm trading in a retirement account. Uh, but I'll add to the fact, uh, I'll add to that the fact that I think uh, betting against companies is, um, I, I don't, I don't believe in that. I don't think, I, I think that that's, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like people that are betting against companies. Uh, certainly there are some companies that are better than others. And there's some companies out there that are, uh, really not great, but you know, everything we've seen with the short and distort and the naked short selling, and you know, we saw it with GameStop. I mean, there was a ton of attention on that the way these institutions can just drive a company into the ground by selling and selling and selling and selling, just obliterating their stock price. That doesn't feel right. So, you know, it's been around for a long time. Uh, it's not like it's a new uh, behavior or a new technique, but I'm, I'm not, I'm really not a fan of it. I think it's a negative outlook. Just hoping and betting things go down but that's just me. You're welcome to disagree with that.
OCEA, uh, yeah, SP, SPH, uh, sorry, SH, PH, too cheap, CWBR, let's circle back to this one. All right, so you've got basically three candles of pullback here. Um, OCEA hitting the scans again as it goes a little higher. So you've got three candles of pullback. The problem is you've got your MACD crossover. Moving averages have moved again, have converged. Uh, the price is below the 20 moving average for the first time this morning. I think this is actually a pivotal spot here. And I think I, I don't think that this is a safe entry. Unless it can get right back above this level, the fact that it broke this moving average, it's below ascending support, that blue line that we drew right there. So I don't think that this is gonna be a, um, I don't think this could be a clean trade at this point. I think the clean trades on this are done uh, and, and I got green on it, made 1300 bucks, $1,331. So didn't really make much. The problem was, uh, you had the, look at these, uh, rejection candles. It would have been very easy. In fact, to lose money. You had this rejection candle here, another rejection there, another one there, and then a drop here, a pop back up a top there, this dip that kind of was a slow grind higher, which I traded right in there, if you recall. Then it pulls back down here. Then it comes back up to four. And I got a trade on the break of four. And then right in here, you know, that, that was right as I was starting the morning show. So I missed that last uh, candle up. We've got about seven and a half minutes to the opening bell. So OCEA has a higher volume candle here right now that's red. High volume candle on the one minute that's red. Don't really like those. Now so let's see. Um, pretty much looked at all of these. By the way, for those on Facebook or those on YouTube that uh, just want to use uh, these scans, uh, you can subscribe to them at daytrade-.com. At Warrior Trading, we have the scans. We use those uh, same scans, uh, but we also uh, have all of the classes and the mentoring. So over on Dash, it's just the tools. On Warrior, it's the tools plus the education. Now, my opinion is it's hard to know how to use the tools if you don't have the education, but for those of you with enough experience that you just want to use the tools, uh, that's fine too. So Michael on YouTube says, shorting is easier, but you earn less. Um, that's a surprising move on CWBR right there. And this is something that um, I'll say, there's been a couple of moves on this that have surprised me. I've been like, that doesn't make sense. 
we had a, this this move right here i was like where did that come from you know false breakout false breakout and then it just kind of ripped so right there it reclaimed the the 20 moving average very quickly but now look it's going to have ascending resistance right up here at this blue line so man that's a that is a tricky spot your best hope is that there's enough people trapped short that they're forced to cover on it but right now that breakout candle has low volume which is a negative divergence you want to see those candles have high volume so a breakout candle on lighter volume coming into ascending resistance i don't know that feels like that could be um a trap but you know again like i said if there's enough shorts in it that they can they get forced to cover does that look pretty weak to me and then all of a sudden it goes so your high right now is 485 up 211 percent i have to wait for a safer entry managing risk is most important So that's about capital preservation. So I would say right now it's darn close to breaking <clears throat> this blue resistance line. Three very big green candles in a row as it comes into the open. One of the things you have to be careful about is chasing. So when the market's hot, when you have a stock that's really moving, you can get away with chasing a little bit, but the problem of course with something like this is when you get a 60 cent move this quickly if you buy into it too high it can really put you in a tough position got two and a half minutes to the opening bell so i'm going to be uh streaming for warrior members uh for the rest of the morning and we may end up uh, getting some more trades on cwbr we may also end up finding uh, another stock that gets a little sympathy momentum from this 200% move that we've seen this morning. This is good to see. It's great. This is exactly what we want. Nice momentum. Now, maybe it's not as clean as it could be, but at least we have something that's moving. It's better than yesterday. Yesterday was quite slow. You're right. Buy high, sell high. You're buying some, if, 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 that's momentum trading. Having said that, buying after three huge green candles, what's your stop? So you have to be thinking about managing risk. So you've got to manage your downside risk versus your upside. So this just doesn't happen to be in this specific spot. In fact, a safe place. In fact, there might be a safer place when it's up 300% on the day, if it goes up that high. That's totally possible. Just because in that moment, I was able to get a tighter stop on a trade. The other thing right now is with less than a minute to the opening bell, this is forming a topping tail which you know again on lighter volume it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a red flag going into the open all right so we've got our watch list cwbr up 200 percent that's the leading gapper that's the one that all eyes are on so that's the one i'll be focusing on and i want to remind you guys who have tuned in to the morning show to make sure you check out uh, the free downloads that we have for you guys there's a link in the description you can check those out and reminder of course Trading is risky. My results aren't typical. So make sure you manage your risk and trade in a simulator before you put real money on the line. And I'll see you guys back here for the morning show tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. All right, thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning.